Oh, that shit was tight. That shit was tight. Oh, oh, so fucking tight. Yes. Oh, yes, man. You're here. Hey, I, yes, man. Will you be joining us for our for our show at the uh, uh, Out of Bounds Festival? Yeah. Uh, you sound a little bit hesitant. You you got some megrims about it. Yes. Is it because you found out that we pirated the hundreds of thousands of dollars of stuff in our youth? Yes. I, I would imagine you're pretty disappointed. Yes. Do you come from a long line of people who worked at like Adobe or yes. Yes. I mean let's be let's be real here. Is it really because you're plugged into the uh, college industrial complex and that you don't like the fact that we know that you're a fucking fraud and your whole industry is a lie? Yes. <laughs> Well, cool. Look forward to seeing you, man. It'll be great. <laughs> anyway, make sure you make those minimum payments, you fucking slaves. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Hey, good show, everybody. Man, that was fun. That was I, I, I didn't know if Bonnie was going to be cool with telling you the, didn't know? the full story. Oh, wow. No, that was, that was sort of a... That was sort of a... Like, a, a, I just figured oh, I would yeah, get Brian, started Brian, and gauge the put, reaction. Put it, Put it like this. We all, we've all skinned our knee, right? You know, it goes from being very raw to eventually scabbing over to eventually healing. Where are you now? If, 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 if the scrape that you had was uh, 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 earlier over the weekend, right? Like, like, where are we right now in the real time of everything healing over? Is oh, on that story? Over? Oh, no, no, no. E everything, um... Yeah, so in order, there was the incident, and then there was, basically, Bonnie said, and this is this is what I perceive good partners do, is say, hey, here's where I'm at. Uh, I'm not prepared to deal with this today. We'll talk about it at some point, and we'll get it all figured out. Uh, yeah. But then meanwhile, in the intervening time, Penny and I had uh, our discussion and got on the same page and realized where the miscommunications were. Uh, now, this, and this, was, this was all over text, or did you meet with her? Oh, uh, oh, I, I, I mean, we're, 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 it, it, we're, I mean, this is the nice thing about being married 20 years is, is there's no like, don't even talk to me. Like, like you, that doesn't oh, no, happen. No, 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 you, you and Penny. the kid. You're Penny. You're not, not, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah no, not, no, no, no. Penny, Penny yeah. basically, you know, uh, Penny asked like, Hey, so what are you thinking on the whole getting my iPad back situation? And I was like, I, I gotta be honest, kiddo. Let's, let's. I, this is uncharted waters for me. We got to figure out the right. Let's hash this out. Yeah, or or, or we got to figure out the right, an appropriate set of consequences. And here's what I suspect is that you know what really needs to happen is you and me both need to talk to your mom. And then over that 20 minutes, you know, we figured out like, well, how did we get to this sideways place? And then you know, now new mini bosses. Whenever your mom's ready to hear, you know, we we could talk it through. But but in that healing phase, uh. It, it might have been fine. Bonnie's not the type, neither of us are the type to really get much currency out of holding things over anybody's head. So once the 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 transformational moment for me was to realize that, oh, no, 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 Bonnie's not really concerned about how I wronged Penny. She's concerned about how I wronged Bonnie by bringing this drama to her doorstep, by playing the chess game of parenting so poorly. And, and, I, and all of a sudden I was like, oh, I do have a... An apology to to give for that uh yeah. and so w the moment that we got to total absolution was definitely when bonnie volunteered because i didn't even know like she she was annoyed she was annoyed enough to try to change my hearthstone password but failed to do so and she's got like all of the uh credentials uh, in, in front of her stuff, yeah. but it was just you know she couldn't get into the menu and do the thing and and like when she volunteered that without just out of nowhere uh that was when i knew that okay everything is fine we're all on the same page <laughs> yeah because she had attempted to sanction and she was willing to admit that she had failed to do it yes yes well and 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 i brought up i was just like uh hey look i get that penny and i got spun up uh, and that you're not happy, but I, I, I'm unclear where this deal me in aspect is coming from, you know, the, the, well, now I'm going to steal your sh shit too. And, and we're, and so we, we were able to resolve all of that. But, uh, 
I don't know. I, I, if the, I mean, it's taken us a hot minute to get here, but um, I'm so pleased at how good our families become at effective communication uh, on that kind of stuff. Well, I mean, you know, the good news is this will be the last time you'll deal with an acting up 15 year old. <laughs> God damn it. <sighs> <sighs> Uh, no, yeah, just next time you just like, you're like the cops, right? Because you are the cops basically for your kids. So you just have to make a very firm and clear warning. If you do not comply with the instructions, then I will shoot. Like, <laughs> you can't just waggle the gun, right? You have to, you have uh, to say it verbally. Today I learned. <laughs> I mean, or better yet, maybe don't make, put myself in that position of, of, of having to either do or die. Yeah. Uh, Hey, Justin, is there a link for DragonCon you want people to know about a schedule or anything for seeing you there? No, not yet. Not okay. Yet. But the show is at 2.30 on Saturday. So uh, everybody come out. It's called Jury, 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 despite the fact that it's going to be a politics, politics, politics show. Because for whatever reason, this year, DragonCon decided that they don't do politics, despite the fact that I've done the politics, politics, politics show there live for the last few years. Is that the uh, 31st? If that's the Saturday, then yeah. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Just that sounds sure. about right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's take a look at some show titles, <laughs> including our top one. There was an escalation. <laughs> that's pretty good. A very deliberate waggle. Also good. Just to seem I'm a bad parent. Less a fan of that one. Torn asunder. <laughs> <laughs> Penny has big, strong Big, hands. strong hands. <laughs> at the next turn. When you get tired, Dr. Pepper spilled on you. Go ahead and take your big, strong hands and rip your father's shit. <laughs> Don't bring new school clothes to a diet, Dr. Pepper fight. Judge Bonnie and her dust. Student loans and Dr. Pepper. I hear there's a shower now. If you're a cop or a district attorney, stop listening. <laughs> <laughs> Aggressively fold our arms. Frankly, my dear, I can make you very uncomfortable. <laughs> That's not quite how it was. That's creepier than <laughs> I said child, it. My <laughs> child, you could be very uncomfortable. <laughs> Frowning elbows is pretty good. Austin soda crisis. 40 cent word. In front of your own mother. <laughs> that, was a, that was a fine turn of context. <laughs> that escalated Schwoodley. <laughs> Don't talk to me until we're ready to talk. Bird stuck in your six pack. A waggle across the bow. <laughs> Ripping oh. fat cotton is very good. <laughs> See, frown the elbows, sugary goo, ghost mom, <laughs> the incredible Hulk Hogan. Let me tell you something, daughter. <laughs> Why we use coasters? I want my Nickelback price. The one was a tough year. Morbius in the Matrix. Right, let's take a look at the top. Okay. Yeah, I think it's got to be there was an escalation. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm with that. Dude, Open Bayou, by the way, I had like nine of them that were fucking certainly worthy. Big shout out to the Bayou. Shout out, Open Bayou. Thank you to everybody who submits show titles using the Bengus command in the chat. I'm going to do a little bit of email. Uh, back to the question that we had from uh, Merrill in the audience. Um, Oh, yeah, he didn't send in an email. Yeah, uh, well, on, that's, that's fine. Well, we can talk about it now. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. I, I liked it. Um, I liked the fact that it was not a documentary. Uh, we were talking about the Amazing Jonathan documentary. So, yeah, documentary. yeah, we're talking about the not untitled anymore Amazing Jonathan documentary that is on Hulu right now. It is getting a lot of buzz. It was obviously very pushed by Hulu uh, uh, over the weekend. Uh, I would not be shocked if it is something that is at least discussed uh, in the like awards, like or or lauded categories at the end of the year. Um, it's complicated because uh, 
you know, in again, the magic world is 20 people deep and 20 people wide. So somebody that has not only fame, but also artistic credibility like Jonathan does uh, is somebody that is well known. And also you hear things that are shown in that documentary. I'm happy that, that it is shown as as vividly as it is in that documentary about you know the fact that he is an unrepentant crystal meth user uh that is something that he has said and done for a long time that being said uh the documentary like you said brian is not a documentary and that's something that was a value add for you yeah especially because i watched the other documentary uh it was not a match for me i mean i feel like like there are some priors in talking to you and Andrew about uh, 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 this. Like, Andrew's got feelings because he knows Jonathan probably the best out of all of us. Um, you have feelings because you did not like the previous documentary, or, or <laughs> specifically robbed of your time. Uh, I mean, not as much time as I would have been if I had not been watching it at one and a half to two x speed. Um, <laughs> but, but again, it just, uh, it was, it was too, uh, at some point that documentary began to feel more like a promo reel <laughs> than a documentary. And so like, like a, like a Wikipedia page where it's illustrated by video clips. And again, and on, on the off chance that anybody who worked on that documentary ends up seeing this, uh, just. I recognize it just wasn't for me. It wasn't the story I want. So the promise after watching it that that there would be a subversive story behind the story was very, very engaging. And pretty quickly, I, I to be honest, I was uh, kind of surprised that either you or Andrew uh, ex had even the slightest doubt that, that uh, Amazing Jonathan was in on it. Because uh, it seemed fairly obvious to me the entire thing long, but I mean, I, mean, I, I guess we'll find out at I, some I, point. I, I don't know why that would be. I mean, like, sure. I mean, if you want to plant that flag, then that's fine. But like, I, 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 I my, my, my point was not to say like, oh, it's definitely that, or it's definitely not. It's like certainly hope because because otherwise they'd be messed up. Yeah. Like, yeah. So I don't know. I mean, I, I guess I didn't feel enough. Like, I mean, I don't know. Again, it's like I could see a world where Jonathan looks at his life and says, well, but then again, like, so wait, did the other documentary just like happen? Cause it did happen. It got dumped on fucking YouTube. It didn't get sold anywhere. Uh, but then again, who knows exactly at, at the point that that's ready for sale if they're hearing, oh, no, there's another documentary and they've already got this other gigantic name attached to it. Then, like, that might discourage the sale of another documentary. So it's like somebody did the work on another thing, and that's a major part of, of the thing. So I think that there's probably at least some element of truth to it. Like, unless the other documentary is part of the setup for the Hulu one. Yeah. Um, you know, but, uh, I, do, you, is it, do, you, do you think that? No, I, if I was going to guess completely from the outside, having uh, no knowledge whatsoever, um, it seems that Jonathan has a mischievous spirit and that he is dealing with some real shit. And if you think you're about to, to punch out, at that point, you start playing with house money and you don't care, right? And so it's like, well, if I'm very likely going to be dead in a year, then fuck it. I'm going to say yes to everyone. Uh, and this cat who seems to be cool enough that I could just say, hey, just so you know, I'm going to be fucking with you by saying yes to multiple documentary crews. You, from your work, uh, it seems like you could do something interesting with that. Um Anyway, that's happening, and uh, I also think that and then his and then, argument at the end of just like, of course I'm gonna have, say yes to all any documentary that wants to, because 
I mean, look, it, it doesn't, you don't have to be that close to the entertainment industry to know that a lot of stuff happens and a lot of stuff doesn't go anywhere. Yeah. And, and, you know, you look at that one and that was an all right, very by the book biographical documentary the YouTube one. Right. Uh, and you look at the turnout at that, you know, at that screening that they do, that they kind of snuck into. And it was, for, I mean, the amazing, amazing Jonathan wasn't even there for it. So, uh, you, you we're, look at it we're, like, we're also, by the way, they set up this very theatrical sting to like, gotcha these guys that, mm. again, it's like the one thing that has always just made me feel weird about that doc is that it's like, it is great at putting you in the moment, a credit to the documentarian that you are always feeling the emotion of the guy at the moment, despite the fact that there are even times in the documentary that they're reminding you that this thing is done even before the movie's done, right? He shows his parents the movie before the movie has finished. There's only another 15 minutes left in the documentary itself at the point that he screens the entire thing for his parents. Uh, so you're like, okay, but you still built the rest of this flick around these people being the bad guys and Jonathan being this Machiavellian, possibly, like, guy who is deliberately fucking with our protagonist, the documentarian. So it's like, I'm, again, my, my, I, I hope that I am being a, 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 a nervous Nelly in only giving it the like, I hope treatment on everybody being on the same page. Uh, because that's the only thing that it's like, if, if it's not, and if it's cobbled together with a few things that he, he wound up being able to genuinely surprise Jonathan at the end. And that, that ending scene, which I found very touching is indeed genuine and not set up where everybody kind of knows what's going on. Uh, then that means that the rest of that documentary paints this guy in a really kind of unflattering light that I don't think is an addition or a, a, an exciter or a multiplier on his art. Yeah, I, I, if I were to bet, I would bet that the moments that you're like, oh, is that a genuine moment of surprise? I bet it was a mem genuine moment of surprise. But I would also bet that early on in the back and forth negotiations are, hey, uh, if you want to do something unconventional, I'm game. Uh, you know, just, uh, you know, if, if you want to set some stuff up, whatever it is, if you want, if you want to wrap a surprise in, in some gift wrapping and then and then spring it on me and then get whatever you can get on there. I mean, I, 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 what's interesting is when I, I brought up the words uh, pro wrestling to Andrew and he immediately s sort of shut that down saying, um, you know, like, no, 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 but it's not fake or whatever. But it's like but but there is sort of uh, much like improv or any of these other arts where it's just like, hey, here are the boundaries. Here's the box. Let's figure out what we can make in that box. And, mm -hmm. you know, uh, it, 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 my guess is they they set up a number of narrative threads. Uh, one that would have been a fine story had uh, Amazing Jonathan died faster than expected. Another that uh, would have been fine if he had died, uh, you know, with four extra years than anybody expected of life or whatever. And this is the one that we got where, uh, holy shit, we're coming up on five years and he's still alive and kicking him back on tour. And, um, uh, I, I, I don't know. I was not bothered by any, uh, moment that felt fake, uh, because of course it has to be, you have to, that's something like, that, like any mentalism trick. You only wait right. until you know the answer to reveal that it was in the envelope the whole time. Yeah. We, I mean, and maybe it's because we, I mean, we don't do, we, we film a lot of stuff uh, very documentary style just because it's very off the cuff. But at the end of the day, you know, we will film stuff that we need to, uh, especially in terms of like pickups or, you know, extra detail, you know, retakes or whatever uh, to fully tell the story. And, you know, we and, and we've we've had times where we've filmed something and 
film something recreating something that did happen even even though it's very difficult to recreate just so that we could try to you know have have you know more coverage on that stuff like i i i think that's any that's part of any documentary process uh or any sort of reality element right is you just need to 100%. set up you need to set up these things so that because if you just sit in front of the camera and say and then i looked it up and it was this person you know like yeah. that's that's that brings people out of it even more so than the framing of, of this documentary goes through so, so I, I, I i i think i mean I, i'm reading some of this this pin statement that mar that merrill posted and uh it's it's uh it's uh, it's a pretty long but, thing yeah. but 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 yeah. uh so uh, go ahead no, justin. No, justin well no, no uh, so so I was going to go on a different tangent, but I kind of I have not read the, the the pin statement because we were having a conversation. But but what is the pin statement? Uh, I mean, it, it's it's rather long from the documentarian talking about his process and meeting uh, Ben, who had already been working and and. So this this is this is the other. This is uh yeah this is uh, Steve Byrne, the director of the Always Amazing, the other the first other documentary crew in the Hulu. So show, yeah, uh, by the, the way, YouTube all right, and also because some people are asking. The Amazing Jonathan is a comedy comedian uh, or comedy magician, uh, uh, maybe one of the best ever. Mm. If you want one of the uh, most awesome half hours of magic, period, go watch his Lounge Lizard set from uh, Comedy Central back in the day. It is amazing, and it is the soul of the act that made him famous, transgressive, uh, uh, you know, kind of NC-17 in all the right areas while fitting it into an act that kind of played to a PG crowd. He was... Awesome is awesome. Uh, uh, he also got a uh, basically a medical recommendation that he was going to die in a year, and that was five years ago. Yeah. Okay, so, diagnosis, so. not not so much a recommendation. <laughs> you should die in the next twelve months. <laughs> yeah. Just you know, take one and then call me in the morning. Uh, so, uh, boiling down this long pin comment, um, uh, they're upset that the Ben the Ben documentary crew filmed him and his crew. Uh, even though asking, even though they ask not to multiple times, they do show up in the film, but they're all blurred out and they have voice, you know, their voices um, disguised. Um, uh, he feels uh, apparently Ben, uh, I guess, did not uh, let on that when they were at the screening very sneakily that he was a part of that sort of sting question that was used in the in the documentary. Oh, no, no, no. Ben, ben, ben was definitely a dick. Uh, that whole yeah. thing. Like, like, like it. it uh, this seems mm -hmm. to me like the story of um uh, two possibly more you know more or more film crews uh where um <laughs> one just wanted to be nice guy and do a nice guy documentary and what you got was a very nice guy do documentary sure. uh, uh ben uh, there, there, there's uh, almost certainly he's thinking like okay well i guess i gotta go the 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 gotcha route the the mm -hmm. i'm I'm, uh, I'm I'm gonna play the victim. So the, I guess the big accusation here, and I'll, I'll read it quotefully. He was deceitful. I'll also let you know since I have firsthand knowledge of how deceitful he was willing to go. When he was trying to find an ending to his film, he placed two thousand dollars in front of Amazing Jonathan and asked if he could film Amazing Jonathan throwing him out of his house, providing an ending to the film. To this, uh, AJ was ter justifiably upset and left the interview. That reaction from AJ is what's in the film. That is not just deceitful; it's classless. To provoke any person to get a reaction on film is beyond anything I can even morally comprehend. That's an interesting question because you, when you're telling any kind of reality or unscripted, we'll say unscripted programming, sure. you have to, by its very nature, Frankenstein it together after the fact. And if what you need is 15 seconds of somebody visibly upset and walking away, mm -hmm. then you, you figure out a way to cause somebody to get visibly upset and walk away and and i so, don't know so the, the, this this though gets into kind of the the element of reality television versus documentaries because documentaries have been faker than we want them to be for a very long time but we still give them this idea of well like what bryce said like maybe you reenact one little thing just to make it all click and make it sing and it tells the larger story. Right. Reality television is staged. We know it's staged. We know that uh, uh, Snooki is not really going to go get dog food at four o'clock in the morning because the dog's sick. It's because they wrote a script saying Snooki goes to go get dog food at four o'clock and her and her tire blows out. 
right? I, also, I, I think you just nailed it because I think I think the reason that uh, An- Andrew was not a fan uh, is because I, I I guess I'm the only one here who yes, it's called the Amazing Jonathan documentary, but it's a unscripted reality program about an attempt to make an Amazing Jonathan documentary. Right. It is not a documentary by any stretch of the word. It's not a documentary right, about not. Amazing Jonathan. It's not even a documentary about uh, ben. the protagonist, right. Ben. It's it uh, is it is. I, I mentioned this a little bit on the when we talked about it in After Things, but it is a kind of low rent true crime type of story. Like something happened. Let's look at what happened and try to resolve it. Uh, the hunt for a story. <laughs> the the show basically. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I and I suppose like. Because you see all the threads that go nowhere, where he's like, "Well, maybe Amazing Jonathan's secretly a, a, a mandrake," and they're like, "Nope, no, he's not. I'm, I'm the jerk." And then it's like, yeah. "Or maybe these other guys are the bad guys." Nope, they're not other bad guys. Just there was some miscommunication, and that's why they're, you know, saying it's from the guys who did Man on Wire. And then, mm-hmm. and then even the ending is very clearly like, "Fucking Christ, can we just get an ending to this?" Uh, yeah. oh, I don't know. Here's a nice thing I guess I could do uh, yeah. or try to do. It was you. Un- it was. Uh, you know, mostly toothless, but it was a unique, interesting way to be like, hey, you know what? The At least I can, like, make you write about this one thing and, you know, let you go instead of doing what he rightfully accused him of doing, which was, you know, try to exploit his death. Um, yeah. And, and you know, cast cast out on his credibility and, and trustworthiness. Um, so, yeah, it's it, it. Yeah. Calling it a documentary is is is. It's 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 a very specific set of standards that we have for that word, but also it's probably not the best word for what. That uh, is. Yash Punker in the chat says, "Which documentary should he watch?" As an amazing Jonathan fan, uh, watch the one on YouTube and yeah, always amazing. Uh, that's called the only reason to watch another one is if you find the first one to be a bit too whitewash for your tastes, which is where I was. I wanted more of the the grit and the drug stuff or whatever, and as a result. Uh, Whatever the second movie is, because it's definitely not a documentary. Whatever the second movie is, it certainly delivers all of that stuff. Uh, it gives a portrait consistent with. Uh, I will say that there are the human elements of the Hulu documentary that give a portrait consistent with descriptions of Amazing Jonathan that I've heard from people that would say that they like love him, that they are like close friends, and they love him. So uh, that is real. There are elements of that documentary that are really, 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 really real. Like the boredom, the the feeling of being trapped by this uh, a medical condition that he's like literally told the world, uh, told the world he was going to die and now has had to watch his own funeral for four years. Like like that's that is a, an element of 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 his life that is being painted there and where I can see Andrew being upset is that it's not even that that story is really even told like that's there, but it's secondary to the director's story. It's secondary to the director. Like again, there there's a moment about halfway through the movie where he goes through this and some of it is very touching about like, why do I always want to tell death stories? And he basically does this little origin flashback to himself that is real. It's touching. He's got like this crazy footage that illustrates it. Uh, but when that's happening, and that's where I think when Andrew's like, oh, well, you know, this is real. This is real and this isn't real. What his complaint is that there's just time being run off the clock to build this other narrative that's like, I mean, you could have filled that in with him with like in a death story, recalling the life that was is the tragedy, right? Like, like the more you understand, like it's not even like, doesn't even delve that far into Jonathan's drug use. Like it shows it, but then it really only serves to be this, uh, a moral test for the director two thirds through the movie. It's not like, Oh, well, what could he have been without it? You know, was there a moment in which he faltered because this was a no go? Did it contribute to his health problems? Like there, there's a lot of questions that kind of could have been 
explored uh, that instead are Jonathan is this removed element of his own documentary. He's this overarching force as opposed to the protagonist. Yeah. Uh, that's a really good way to put it because he is not a character in his own show. He's just an elemental force. It's uh, it might as well be a documentary about a tornado. Like we don't go, we don't yes. get to find out about the tornadoes feelings as it destroyed this town or did whatever. I mean, tornadoes just do whatever tornadoes are going to do. Well, it's like, it's like a guy came into town and found a dragon and he's like, look at this famous old dragon. And then the dragon starts doing dragon shit and, and being kind of mean and being kind of fucked up. And you're like, Oh my God, let me tell a story about how this once beloved dragon turned into this real asshole. And then it ends and you're like, oops, I was the asshole. The dragon was just a dying dragon. I mean, what's I think that's a fine story, and and especially it in is. a very crowded marketplace where somebody's already got the hooray for the dragon episode, and somebody else is like, well, I was working on another hooray for the dragon thing. Then it's like, uh, sure, tell a story where where oh my god, is the dragon the terrible thing? No, I'm the terrible thing. End of movie. Um. I, I thought it was a fine story. Again, not a documentary. If you go in not expecting it to be a documentary, then I, I, I think you'll have a fine time. Uh, is there much depth to the Jonathan story to warrant a traditional uh, doc? Hey, if you, if you want to know, <laughs> do I have a documentary for you? Uh, so I wasn't able to get all the way through the other one. <laughs> I, watched, I watched about 15 minutes of it, and, and it wasn't that the story was the problem. It was the construction of the doc to me. That was the problem. It was just like you realize very quickly when you watch that, like the intro has one of those like it's literally like the embarrassment of riches of intros where it's like, OK, we're going to do the voicemail that Jonathan has saved on his phone, obviously forever from George Carlin talking about how awesome George Carlin thought his act was. And then we're going to do the Copperfield thing. And then we're going to do the Penn and Teller thing. And then we're going to do another testimonial. And then we're going to do another testimonial. And then we're going to show early baby footage. And it's like, fuck me, man. Like, this shit is like 10 minutes in. And, like, get me to the point where, like, he's doing a thing. Like, like we're, 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 we're on the way. Like, I, I I think that the other one does a better job of trying to say, look at this fascinating entertainer, but oh my God, the, the, the Hulu one is created by a television professional that's at the top of his now, game. If you want, and maybe, maybe this is the real story is that it should never have been a documentary, but if you want the real best version of amazing Jonathan's story, listen to his hour to, uh, slash two hours on the Pendulet podcast where he details how he saw Harry Anderson working on the street uh, at, at the wharf in San Francisco and pretty much ripped off his act. And then slow. And then the one day that Harry Anderson shows up and he's like, Oh shit, I'm fucked. Uh, that's Harry Anderson and I'm doing his act. And by the end of it, uh, Harry walks up and says, uh, loved everything you did. It was really great. It was really original. I liked how different it was from everything else. And he realized that he thought he was still ripping off Harry Anderson's act, but had added enough of himself and had changed things over time that it was unrecognizable to the source yeah. that he thought he was ripping off. Um, it, it's a wonderful, wonderful story. And it almost makes me wonder if it wouldn't have been a better narrative movie. Uh, but uh, I don't know. We, we, we you know, we play I mean, the again, it's like uh, of all the versions that we're going to get the kind of attention that this one did, that the Hulu one did, that like, you know, there's only X amount of famous documentaries that happen. And when they get that famous, they're very often lauded with awards like this one did. It captured a zeitgeist. It, it, it And even if it meant you know, reducing Jonathan's entire career down to the guy who will smoke meth on camera. Like, you know, then that's that. Uh, 
And I think that's that's the sad part. Ultimately, like like the sad part is also that like Jonathan is always portrayed as a has been in in the in in the Hulu one. Uh, and I'd hate to say it, also in the YouTube one. Like we see all of his best gags and yeah. then we watch him perform them half heartedly to his doctors uh, as he's getting drugs put in him. Like, like yeah. he showed that exact bit just a few minutes ago and he's clearly not in a performance environment and on fire. Like, 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 uh, uh, I, I feel like the documentary that was trying to portray him in, in a positive light for me. And again, if you worked on it, just understand this, how it landed with me. Um, uh, I, I I didn't like seeing him so much footage of him half heartedly as like an old dying uncle, you know, like, ah, oh, this used to be a gag we did in vaudeville. You know, th th there was too much. I spent too much time seeing him dying, pulling out old bits uh, for people who gave him pity chuckles. And that, that, that broke my heart. And I guess that's the thing, right? Is like, there is a part of the story that's about that. Because it's about a dying magician. So, like, you can't tell the story about a dying magician. It's like, hey, he's on top of his game. Never been sharper. Writing new material, right? Uh, uh, there's going to have to be that. But also, like, and, and maybe the first one was guilty of being too much tell and not enough show, right? And there are these moments in the Hulu one where they get the the – the party, like the handy cam party footage from like the hotel parties in like uh, Jonathan's heyday when he's like fucking young and skinny and is just like, like surrounded by a bevy of like fucking Aquanet big tit babes and everything. And it's like, OK, like that, like that's kind of the element that I wanted to hear. Basically, I wanted to see a documentary about like. Early 80s, like street performer to like the, the, the mid nineties when he's like at his height and it's like, all right, either he's going to be Penn and Teller or Copperfield or, or he's going to stay here forever. And then he stays there forever. Cause he never got to those heights. Right. He played great showrooms in Vegas, but never got the gigantic residency. Uh, he had the great comedy special, but never the like, Copperfield now he's on Fox and he's like Fox's answer to to Copperfield right he never got the Broadway run of Penn and Teller so it's like I'm gonna take a wild guess part of that is because of the drugs uh, but you can tell that story and then just kind of fast forward until this like death diagnosis like I, I guess I, I don't know how much of worth is is there in the like and then he tried to do these things or at least like if you're going to show him doing the half-hearted jokes to his doctor like juxtapose that with him on fire like mm. like when his career is like there like they shorten that gap a little bit i guess i also don't uh, i you know i'm not as plugged into the magic stuff or certainly the magic you know, history, uh, modern as it may be. Um, but it, it doesn't seem like, I, cause I'm thinking of, um, uh, HBO had that, mo that mini doc series, uh, this, this past year about, uh, Gary Shandling, right? Oh yeah. And yeah. The, the, the Gary Shandling diaries, diaries something yeah, like that. The yeah. Zen diaries of Gary Shandling. Right. Uh, and, uh, man, that was, that was like six hours. That was Judd Apatow, right? Yeah. And like the justification of that was like, he has an entire career arc, right? Like he's doing the comedy, he's getting into comedy and he's, you know, uh, uh, doing shows and then TV shows and this TV show. And then he kind of fades into obscurity and what happens with the, the people around him um, where I, I don't even know that the amazing Jonathan's trajectory maybe extends that far. If, if, I don't know if that's out of line to say. I mean, I, 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 I mean, I, he's not I, like a TV show guy or right. Like, he even kind of says, like, you know, I did my stage show and it was very well. And I don't know. I, this is this is all baseless and, and yeah, uh, uh, 
Uh, no, I mean, like, in terms of magic, if you have the amazing Jonathan's career, say nothing of all the extracurriculars that come around it, you That's did good. a fucking amazing job. Oh, yeah. Like, you are a legend. Like, you are somebody that is revered by your peers. I don't think that, I mean, even Penn and Teller dare say that they have a brand. Uh, uh, their, their, their act never fucking would go in places that Jonathan would. Mm. Jonathan is doing, like, this bizarre fucking, like, Bugs Bunny meets Coke addicts like uh, a, a manic sort of element that I don't know if any magician has ever done because that's kind of uh, uh, the opposite of what you want to portray yourself in magic. Cause in magic, you're in control. You're always there. You are the one who's guiding people. And with Jonathan stuff, he was always in control, but it always kind of seemed like he, his character was always being portrayed as mm -hmm. like, constantly he's getting hit with shit he's snorting coke like yeah. there's all these different kind of like sidelines that brought you into an immersive world that so few magicians fucking do like most magicians are like you're immersed because i'm doing magic mm -hmm. and he's like no you're immersed because i'm doing these fucking cartoon gags yeah. and then i'm doing these things and then i'm doing tricks that aren't really tricks but then i'm really doing tricks like it's fucking brilliant. It was a choreographed car crash, right? Like it was. Yes. You were like, oh, it did it. Like a TV definitely didn't fall on his head, but it definitely felt if for a second that happened. That happened, and and that's very immersive. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Now I'm now I'm just. Uh, uh, anyway, I, here's what I hope. I hope that people see. Uh, I firmly believe that the best experience of seeing the Hulu documentary is to watch the YouTube one first. Uh, if you're not mm. familiar with Amazing Jonathan. Yeah. And even if you are, it's probably better to watch the other one first. And it really does like give you like a uh, background and like uh, biographical and documentary Gives style. you the lay of the land. And a lot of big his names, authentic story talk about and all that. Him. Yeah. And also it's like, number one, look, if you don't know Amazing Jonathan, watch Lounge Lizards. The, the thing that I would prefer for you to watch first is the Lounge Lizard special from Comedy Central in the 90s. Go watch that. Understand who he is. Fall in love with his act. And and then go watch any of these. The Hulu one's going to be the more famous, so you're going to want to watch that one because that's going to be the one that's more discussed. Right. If you want to know more about him, read his Wikipedia. If you want to watch his Wikipedia scroll by you on a fucking YouTube video, then watch the other documentary. Well, and, and, and I guess that's the thing is, is – no matter how we got here, where we appear to be now is Amazing Jonathan still alive and kicking. Yeah. Apparently pleased with the Hulu documentary. Hulu documentary has the opportunity to bring his art to a whole bunch of people and make him relevant in new and wonderful and interesting ways that uh, that he deserves. So it's it's. Uh, I'm I'm kind of a fan of all of those things. <laughs> like every, all, every, everything what, I just all, read. Along. All of my all of my reservations about the Hulu thing. If it means that he gets another run in Vegas, mm. I'm I'm fine with it. Whatever, if that's the price that is paid, if if having that doc out there me, means that more people get to see him live, I was lucky enough to see him live in Vegas. If you get to see him live and he is energized by this and feels that there is a, a, an excitement, you know, because I think in the documentary, in all the documentaries, like him going out back on the road was more about him getting the fuck out of the house. He just felt yeah. useless. And uh, no, I, I I mean, I can't even imagine uh, being in solitary confinement on death row and your job is to wade into your pool thrice a day and then yeah. wait. You find know. a way to burn all your money. Yeah, exactly. That's that's well, insane. I guess he kind of find it. Yeah, one. <laughs> <laughs> he did. <laughs> but like, yeah, if there's if there's an element where we get to see he gets to do his art in whatever fucking fashion that he wants, like. Uh, then that is something that I would be thrilled by. Because again, there, there are many geniuses in magic. You can probably count on one hand the comedic geniuses in magic. And like, and then and the face you're watching Brian make is him seeing if he can get to five. <laughs> <laughs> you're not like, wrong. Because uh, uh, as I was saying it, 
I mean, where, where would yeah, you put uh, that? You know what? Uh, <laughs> hey, you want to check it on the belt bet? We had a belt bet today. Let's go. Uh, apparently, the belt bet was anyone that mentions Brian's new ranch or warehouse or studio gets the belt. Uh, Brian got it. Uh, four voters uh, also got it right. So what? there we go. Wait, uh, was it based on who says it first or or oh uh, belt belt rules each yeah, time yeah. each time yeah at the end of the at the end of the stream oh my god i'm so excited i can't wait for you to see it justin it's dude i'm, I'm so, so pumped because now i don't have to get a gym membership for a week and pretend like i'm gonna work out <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's really nice uh all right well uh speaking of which uh i would love it if we could uh wrap sure. this on up absolutely we Thank got you started nice and early today you yeah, yeah. welcome well I hope you enjoyed the three-hour presentation of Tech Things Attack. <laughs> we had, look, yep. hey, man, uh, you guys talking is what people are here for. So, Hey, by the way, uh, uh, pat on the back to all of us. Um, I love the fact that shit can set fire to itself. And Justin and I know that it's like, all right, our job is to not be phased. <laughs> and Bryce is just like, uh, hey, man, we got this. Job to scream. <laughs> I, did, I did lose it a little bit. But. Flipping switches. Turning <laughs> knobs and dials. Uh, thank you everybody for watching. We'll I'm sure we'll have more streams uh, coming up before next week, so keep an eye out here on twitch.tv slash night attack. Friday fantasy continues on Friday. Uh, I'm gonna see if Justin is interested in doing some marbles while Brian's out of the house. A mm. uh, mm -hmm. bunch of other stuff coming up, so uh, make sure you're, you're following. Love you guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.